Let's cultivate our motivation. So just as it says in the mind training teachings, we live in the times of five degenerations. When sentient beings' afflictions are quite strong and many negative actions, the decline in the lifespan, wars, and so forth. But instead of getting discouraged about this, then we should practice the mind training teachings that show us how to transform adversity into the path to awakening, specifically by generating bodhicitta. So if we really study those teachings and have firm conviction in them, in the truth of those teachings, then even though it may be chaos around us, in our own our own minds can remain balanced and steady optimistic and very much in the dharma in fact we can even begin to see that this is the best time to practice the dharma especially since Creating virtue in a time of degeneration uh, makes that virtue stronger because it's more difficult to create. So if we dedicate our hearts and minds to doing that, then we'll experience the result of creating very strong virtue, especially by practicing fortitude, and joyous effort and learning to handle anything that comes our way with a positive mental state. And so with that kind of attitude, let's really have a determination to generate bodhicitta to improve our understanding of emptiness and to have a joyful mind no matter what happens. Because we're working for the benefit of all sentient beings. So these mind training teachings are quite uh, important for us. And um, we're very fortunate to have contacted them. Okay, we are at 74% location 7791, which means you're looking for the title that says, uh, when a person seems just right here, Right, but right, right there. The speaker's off. You can move it. When a person seems to be speaking of two phenomena as if they were three possibilities. Page 387. Page 387. As if 3P and you agree. So, we're going to go to the, pa- the part that says answer and debate. So let's just do it first out of our heads, and then we'll look at the book. Okay? So if it's something that is 3P, it's going to look like that, right? Right. Okay, so the person thinks it's that, and you agree. So how do, we, how do we prove that? Let's just do it from our own common sense first and see what we would think. First, 
first you have to state it out so that people know that we're both talking. So what would you take the microphone and talk, say what you have to say? So you would say to them, um, so well, I guess in debate So maybe terms, give an example. Give an example. Let's give an example. Okay, like, something that's 3P would be um, dogs and mammals. Yeah. Okay. Then you would say to the person, um, it seems like you're saying that there's three possibilities between dogs and mammals that whatever is a dog is a mammal, but whatever is a mammal is not necessarily a dog. And you would kind of clarify that you're talking about the same thing. Or that's all he had said. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm going from common sense, and then we're going to check it in the book. Maybe you guys who can read fast can see what we're missing. Okay. And then so the answer and debate, there are three possibilities between dogs and mammals. Something that is both a dog and a mammal is? Tashi the dog. Yeah. Tashi Spartas. <laughs> okay, the subject Tashi is a dog because um, because he's um of the the species canine domestic. <laughs> okay, just speak up, anybody, if you have things to add or raise your hand. The subject Tashi is a mammal because she did a dog. Well, I'm just following the text yeah, here. She says, said dog, and now she's saying man. You're saying, you're saying something that is both a P and a Q is the subject. Oh, sorry. I probably read this wrong. There are three possibilities between a dog and a mammal. Something that is both a dog and a mammal is the subject Tashi. The subject Tashi is a dog because of being canine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The subject Tashi is a mammal because of... Because of being um, an animal in, a cl in the class that is um, oh, is vertebrate. Uh, vertebrate. Females are meat producers. Vertebrate. Have fur. Females give milk in their live birth and have yeah, born born alive. Yeah, they don't necessarily. Uh, yeah, they're born from womb rather than an egg. That's kind of like warm blood. Warm blood. Warm blooded. Yeah. So I don't know about the hair thing. I think some are bald. Are people tracking what we're doing? So we're on, what page are we on now? I don't have, 388. So we're kind of following that thing, the answer and debate. We've just done number one. So we're showing that there is something that is a dog and a mammal and giving reasons for both. So we've got that, but we don't, we have to kind of make sure it's not like mutually inclusive. They still could be mutually inclusive or, you know, it could look like, you know, it could look like this. We haven't shown yet that it isn't that, or it could look like this. We haven't shown yet that there's some are that some aren't. So that's why we have to keep going and following that. We don't, we haven't shown yet that all that mammals are not, that all dogs are mammals and all mammals are dogs. We kind of haven't shown that yet in a way. We've shown, I mean, let me think about that. We've shown that uh, a mammal, that, that Tashi is a mammal, and we've shown that Tashi is a dog. So we've got that down, but we haven't really ruled out some other things yet. So now we've got to go to number two. Whatever is a dog or is necessarily a mammal, but whatever's a mammal is not necessarily a dog. So the second step with something that you're positing as 3P is to say, which way does the pervasion go? Yeah, I'm just following the what it says here. So you're saying what we're doing now? We're saying what we're doing in this step two is we're showing which way the pervasion goes. Okay. So, uh, so what it says here, the subject... Tashi is a mammal. No, that's not right. Oh, we have to give another one. So now we have to come up something that is a mammal, but not a dog. 
to show that which way the pervasion goes. Toot and low song. Okay, give the mic to somebody else. Oh. Got to get participation here. Who knows any mammals that aren't dogs? A whale. Cats here. Well, that's a cat. And you? A whale. A whale. Is a whale a mammal? Yeah, they are. So fur wasn't one of the things? I made that up. Okay. <laughs> Mam whales don't have fur? Not at all? Not even hair follicles? <laughs> I don't know. Seals seem to. <laughs> okay, we'll go with whales. So we're showing the pervasion now. And thanks for piping up. Venerable Sepp will keep piping up. People who have things to add, so we clarify what we're doing here. So we're now we're checking which way the pervasion goes. And so, uh, oh yeah, so you have to have two different subjects for this. So the first one is he gave a new, a new one, so that you did. The subject... The whale is a mammal because of da 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 da. Oh, but it's not a dog, yeah. And the subject, the whale, is not a dog because it doesn't have four legs. And dogs all have four legs unless they have amputations. So now we've shown that there is a, uh, the pervasion goes that there are mammals that aren't dogs. Are you getting that? So there are mammals that aren't dogs, whales, seals, humans, cats. Okay, so now we're on the number three, I think. Something that is neither a dog or a mammal is a house. Okay, the house is not a mammal because why? Okay, the house is not a mammal because it doesn't have a heart. All mammals have hearts. I think that's true. And the subject, uh, what isn't a dog? We have, we found something that it wasn't a mammal, but we got to find something that's not a dog. A bird. Okay, the subject of bird is not a dog. Oh, the same, oh, same subject. Oh, yeah, one then that's neither. Yeah, very good. Thank you. This is what I get for putting myself up here. <laughs> so the subject of the house is not a mammal. And why is the subject of the house not a dog? How about those houses that they build on top of rivers? Okay. Accepted. Okay, so we did that. Okay, let's go on to the next one. What if their their person thinks they're three p, but they're actually four p? Yeah, we finished that first one. If they if they think they're three p, but they're actually four p, just in your mind, they think it's that, and you think it's this. What do you have to show them? You got to show them that everything in here, there's something in here that really isn't in here. I mean, basically, I mean, I'm sure they have something else to say, but they think it's this and it actually is this. So you got to get them to stretch this circle out here and find out that actually not everything is a, is, is a, I don't know which is which, that is in here is also in here, you know, so you've got to get them to see that, oh, there's something that I thought everything was in, that it was in here was in this circle, but no, it's not the case. It's actually 4P. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying, so you got to figure out, you got to show them that there's something that they think is in here that actually isn't in here. It's not part of that one. That's why it's helpful to do this visually, I think. It's just a little easier. In the book, it says some are and some aren't. Yep. Some yeah. One thing that's both yeah, and that's the thing. It's good to remember that some are and some aren't, but also there's some that are both. So some are and some aren't <laughs> this. And, but there's something that is both. Some are and some aren't. Okay, so, mm, so we got the visual representation. So first try to track down exactly which way the person thinks the probation is running. 
So let's make up something that somebody said here that's wrong, that is actually this, and then let's do that, and we'll figure out which way they think the pervasion is going. Because actually, that makes sense, doesn't it? They think it's like this. There's got to be a pervasion. This has a pervasion. This is being pervaded by that. This is the pervader, and this is the pervaded. But actually, it's not happening like that. So once you show them that doesn't work, you've kind of blown that out of the water. So let's come up with an example, somebody who hasn't spoken yet, of something that is actually 4P, but you think it's 3P. What would be 4P? What are, what's something that has 4P? How about uh, wrong consciousnesses? Mm. Wrong consciousnesses and conceptual consciousness. That's, that's one. Wrong consciousnesses and conceptual consciousness. Those are actually 4P. But a person could think, I think this might be the example I gave in the book actually, the person could think that they're 3P. Now if you had that wrong idea, which way do you think you would probably go wrong? Like, I have a thought, but what do you think? Okay, so you think, okay, we'll call this one P and this one Q. You think that this is Q and this is P. Yeah, that's, I think, the way I would think of it, too. Yeah, there's, there's yeah, so for, let's have, let's play this one out. Why, um, why, just give me your reason first. Why did you say that? Why did, you, why did you set it up that way? What were you thinking about? Well, if you believe that the only real valid perceivers are direct perceivers, then anything that's a conceptual consciousness is going to be have some sort of mistake or erroneousness about it. That might be a conclusion I'd come to. Yeah, like all, all, mis all conceptual consciousness in this system actually are mistaken because they're using a, a conceptual appearance. But you might actually think that they're not only mistaken, they're erroneous. Right, right. So you might take that as, as synonymous, wrong and, and mistaken as yeah, synonymous. Yeah, right. And, and we kind of have. But somebody else thought it might go the other way. Who is that? There's, a, there's reasons to think both. I mean, you could... No, go ahead. She's stupefied. She can't answer. But there could, there's ways to think of it the other way, too. I mean, like... So now you're trying to put like the wrong consciousness in here. Uh, this one being the wrong one and this one being the conceptual. Okay. So for example, you could think that there are some conceptual consciousness that are not wrong consciousnesses. Yeah, so right. for example, a, um, a, an, inferential, um, an inferential realization of emptiness this is still a conceptual consciousness, but it's not a wrong consciousness. And then also you'd be thinking that, well, you're only actually talking about those two. So you're not saying all the consciousnesses that exist are wrong. You're not saying so that saying only that there's... the only wrong consciousness that exists are conceptual consciousness, because you're only comparing conceptual consciousnesses what? and wrong consciousness. Do you think that's true? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't get it. Okay, say your say what you're saying again. I don't so what I'm saying words. that in the universe, if if the universe is conceptual consciousness, the mm, inside one is wrong consciousness, right? That's right. kind of the other way that we were. That I was looking yeah, right. at it. Yeah, and the that's reason. because there is at least one conceptual consciousness that you can point out that is not a wrong consciousness. So it's outside of that right. smaller circle. And that would be uh, an inferential realization of emptiness, which is still a conceptual consciousness, but it's not necessarily a wrong consciousness. Yeah, thank you, selflessness, for this school, which is necessarily, which is a conceptual consciousness, but it's not a wrong consciousness. Okay, but what would you get for instance of something that's a conceptual consciousness and a wrong consciousness? Um, let's see. Uh, wrong. So I would see, yeah, the, the, uh, the appearance of a self 
where there isn't a self. Grasping a self. Okay, so you can see that we can go wrong in a lot of ways. There's a lot of reasons. So that's why they have the part of this where you got to give the reasons for things. It's not just like state the pervasions. You've got to like tack them down. Tack down exactly which way the person seems to think the pervasion is running. Well, how are you going to do that? You've got to ask them like, what are your reasons for saying what you're saying? You know? Okay, so let's go through this thing and we'll use, we're using wrong consciousness and conceptual consciousness. Let's see if we forgot anything else. You'd fling them back consequences. Do they, I don't know if they give the, okay, no, they don't. We have to, we have to do this ourselves. They don't give you the handy thing. Okay. There are two ways you can go with this. You can give them the correct, an correct answer, or you mm -hmm. can fling a consequence. Yeah, state the consequence. Politely point out that some are and some aren't, he says, or fling a consequence. Yep, For instance, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you'd go say, ahead. well, no, actually, there are um, wrong consciousnesses that are... Uh, well, first of all, let's pin down which way the pervasion is going, because then you can, you can point out to them that they're erroneous. So which way are we going to decide that the pervasion... Well, actually, there's no pervasion. Right, but you have to pin down which way the they person think thinks it's going. the pervasion goes. Yep, then so, you can go to these next two steps. Yep, so let's go to, with the first one we had. Okay. The first so one that, we had was what Venable Simke said, which is that the, all conceptual... Con uh, all wrong consciousnesses were conceptual consciousnesses, but now not all conceptual consciousnesses were wrong consciousnesses. She, she had it this way. Uh -huh. So that's the pervasion. We'll just work with one. Because we did it both ways. Okay. So then you need to say, well, no, actually there are wrong consciousnesses that are not conceptual consciousness. For instance, there are... Sense um, consciousnesses. Wrong consciousnesses, such as... Yeah, like... An eye, an eye consciousness apprehending one moon is two. <laughs> Me seeing two moons. Yeah, well, the consciousness seems <laughs> to looking at you and, oh, there's two of you now. <laughs> right. So you could point it out and state it out. That was one. Mm. Or you could give them a consequence. Mm. Well, of course, it's to fling a consequence of the person's view. It would follow that the subject... It would follow that it's an eye consciousness seeing one minus two is a conceptual consciousness because it's a wrong consciousness. There we go. Yeah. What do you think, Venerable Simke? <laughs> it would state what you said again. She's she's flinging you a consequence of your assertion here. So that follow let, me, let me just make sure that my assertions and my assertion originally was that all conceptual consciousnesses were wrong consciousnesses. No, no. That was my, that was oh. mine. And then we didn't use oh, that one. Oh, we, sorry, I yeah. wrote that wrong. Which is where venerable lump cells then I think would make. Yeah, all, oh. yeah, that was mine really off. It was like, all we, conceptual we talked yeah, that right, wrong right. and yeah, mistaken right. could be you're synonymous. Right. Yeah, that might that. be one you're of right. them. I'm wrong. I remember now. So this is wrong consciousness. Yeah, that's right, because you were doing it yeah, that way. And, and that these are yeah, conceptual. All conceptual, right. We're wrong consciousness. Con -cons. <laughs> right. Okay, so now we have to come up with a fling you a consequence. So then it follows that uh, inferential, realize it, inferential realization, realization of selflessness is a wrong consciousness, consciousness because of being a conceptual consciousness. Right. What do you say to that? Say why. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, she, because, no, you, you didn't give a reason. Okay, say what you said again. Let's go back up for us slow-minded people. Like me. So then it follows that an inferential realization of selflessness of persons is a wrong consciousness because it is a conceptual consciousness. 
so that it follows then. Because I, because the one of my ways of thinking would be that 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 genetic the the conceptual appearance of selflessness. Yeah, so you can agree. No, I didn't want to agree, but I don't oh. know how to not agree with her. The no reason not established. Uh, yeah, because she's yeah, she can't say no pervasion. I'd say saw very quickly. Yeah. So she's given this pervasion that all conceptual consciousnesses are wrong, wrong consciousnesses. consciousnesses. Right. So then, if if We're someone says, a consequence. it follows that an inferential realization of selflessness is a wrong consciousness because it's a conceptual consciousness. Right. She cannot say no pervasion because right, because I've already because had already asserted pervasion. that bridge. Or if you do say, so then. Her only response there is to say, reason not established. Or I accept. It could come well, to her, upon to her then, but it hasn't, but it hasn't <laughs> yet. So has, you have to say. If she's honest she, and she sees it, she would say, I accept. But right. if she's holding to her pervasion, she's really holding to that, then she'd say reason not established. OK, then, what do you think about that, though? Given what you were talking about before with the conceptual appearances, what do you think? If someone says to you, well, it follows that the inferential realization of emptiness is a because wrong it's consciousness. Only, because, because it's, it's only a conceptual appearance of selflessness and not a direct perceiver, therefore it is a wrong consciousness. I could continue with my reasoning, saying because it's not a direct perceiver of selflessness, it's still a wrong so consciousness. So you accept the reason, too. That anything that is not a direct perceiver is a wrong. See, that's the next, the next consequence is that I believe that only direct perceivers are um, correct consciousness. So can't she agree? Can't she agree with her statement? She could. Why not? She seems to be. Her think. Her reasoning seems to be agreeing that it is a wrong consciousness because she's mixing up wrong consciousness and mistaken consciousness. Exactly. That's not what we so then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she can agree because that's what she thinks. Mm -hmm. That's where she's mixing it up. So then, now what do we do? So then you'd say, mm. yeah, there you go. Find it up. Let's look it up. Let's see what that is. I'm not that smart. But I'm not, I'm smart enough to stand up here and do something. I know how to look things up. I've got all my knowledge in a box. <laughs> I have a good box right here. This thing has a lot of megabytes. Okay, wrong. Here we go. It's on page 482, wrong consciousness. A knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of engagement. Object of engagement? What do you think about that? <laughs> You're talking about the, the appearing object. Right. Well, we should stay with the form. Let's stay with the form. Okay, so you ask her, okay, then state the definition of a wrong consciousness. And you say... A wrong consciousness is a knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of engagement, which is a conceptual appearance. No, no, no you got well, that. But see, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to go back to. Well, you can. You can have the wrong definition. So what do you add? Okay, so I gave the definition. Now what? No, no. Give the, give the definition cleanly, like the, the, with the, just as it is. And no, that is mistake. Why? why could, what, maybe that's where she's, her mistake is. But if, if, you, uh, if I'm asking for a definition, you and, just, and we have to then agree on the definition. Right, but if she gives a wrong definition, then what do you do? Then that makes the, de the debate very difficult. <laughs> why? Why? No. Yeah, yeah, so that's, so let's do that. Why not? I mean, we can't. You got to do it for real. This is where she has the. This is where the actual mistake is. You can't tell her to give you the definition in the book. I would give her. I would. I don't have the book, right? We don't have the book. We're going out of our head. She might not have that mixed up. So go ahead. Give your definition. Well, it, it, wrong consciousness is a knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of en engagement, which is a conceptual appearance of selflessness which I believe is a wrong consciousness. And then we'd come back and say, yeah, we'd, we'd say this correct, give the correct definition. It follows the definition of a wrong consciousness is 
Somebody's got it. Her, her definition is correct. It's correct. She's just given the wrong illustration. I'm giving the wrong illustration. Right, the illustration you've given of the object of engagement is the conceptual appearance, appearance of, of selflessness. Of selflessness, right? So I would say so. It follows that the object of engagement of an inferential cognizer realizing yes, selflessness is the conceptual appearance yes, of selflessness. selflessness. Right. I accept. And I go, I accept. Oh, now you've lost me completely. Okay, let's back up a little bit. If I'm lost, I'm sure somebody else is lost. Yeah, it's okay. No, we're... So... Right, yeah. so the first part is you stated the definition, which was... Correct. What a knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of engagement is correct. So that part's correct. Right. But the my illustration, which was oh, the conceptual appearance of selflessness, is an incorrect illustration right. of that definition. Yeah, I, now I follow yeah, you. Yeah, because yeah. the object of engagement is selflessness right. itself. It's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So she gave the wrong illustration. Yeah, so you right. would go on I, and debate I, the illustration. Right. I'm right. following you now. That's exactly it. I didn't, so all I, I didn't did was just right. repeat back. Yeah. Oh, so you think that the object of engagement of an uh, inferential cognizer realizing selflessness is the conceptual appearance? That's oh, what you think is the object of engagement? And she says, yep, that's what I think. <laughs> then then you got to find a way to <laughs> help her understand there's a difference. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you well enough. You said it one way once, and I thought you were going to go back to that. But Okay. Yeah, I think this is good to do. Because I just do. Okay, next. Okay, we did a t stating them that that isn't the way it works, and we did a uh, one where we flung back a consequence. Yeah. Other. Yeah. Let's, let's oh. Feet. Okay. Let's, let's say Something that's the, both? the conceptual consciousness, the, for, the person's still working on, if it's a 3P one, it's actually 4P. Right. So we can work it correctly and put the conceptual consciousness in the bigger circle, that's what they're thinking, wrong consciousness in the center, and then we then try to see if that's indeed true, because we believe that it's a 4P. Is that what we're trying to convince, say, that it's actually a 4P? Yes. Okay. So you're saying now... Well... What I'm okay. What I'm saying is, in that upper part there, with the big circle and the right. little circle, we would right. re reverse that. So wrong consciousness would be the smaller circle. No, 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 no. We wouldn't no. do that. No, that, no. Okay. You already had your. Okay. You already had your wrong idea. Okay. <laughs> now we have to get to the right idea. Okay. We don't have to flip it to another wrong. So idea. now we need to do a four P on this. Yeah. So we. We what we have done is by by her showing that your illustration didn't work, we'd somehow get you to see that you were wrong. You know, at some point in there, you're going to figure it out that oh, I've got something wrong here. And in your situation, it's like you're mixing up the mistaken consciousness and an erroneous consciousness or a wrong consciousness. You're thinking you were thinking a mistake, a wrong consciousness, a mistaken consciousness and a wrong consciousness were the same thing. And they aren't in this system. So she just gave you, kind of peeled away that. So we have kind of set you closer. We haven't done it formally, I don't think. But so, yeah, if you were going to prove that, you'd have to show one of each and something that isn't any of them. So what's something that is both a wrong consciousness and a conceptual consciousness? Itself. Okay, why is the grasping of self a wrong consciousness? Give me a, a valid reason for that. Because it's a mind. <laughs> because the yeah, mind I'm is. I'm the challenger. I don't have to know anything. <laughs> because it is the knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of engagement. Yes. Okay. And why is a why is the grasping at inherent existence that we said mm -hmm. a conceptual consciousness? Okay. Previous page, thank you. Uh, because it is a determinative knower that apprehends a sound generality and a meaning generality as suitable to be mixed. <laughs> 
Yeah, I like that one. That one I understand. <laughs> Maybe you could explain it to me. Okay. I like generalities. Okay, so, so we've got something that's both. Anyone want to, any, everybody agree? Okay, so how about, give an example of something that's a wrong consciousness, but not a conceptual consciousness. That's the eye consciousness seeing two moons. Okay, and it's a wrong consciousness because it fits that definition, but why is it not a conceptual consciousness? Give a reason why it's not a not conceptual consciousness. Because you're actually using the eye consciousness, which is a... Which is not a which is a direct perceiver. Okay. Does that work? I mean, it works for me, but does it? Does it have we done it right? Well, all the smart people in the room think so. <laughs> or oh, that is a sense consciousness. Yeah. I mean, how, you know, you can debate anything, but at some point, like, don't we know that sense consciousness and uh, conceptual consciousness are mutually exclusive. exclusive. I mean, if you don't know it, you don't know it. But if you do know it, you do know you it. So then it that works. As the reason. So it depends. It depends if you're the correct subject. <laughs> you have to be the correct subject for it to work. If you know it, then that reason will work for you. And if you don't know it, then that reason won't work for you. This is what we kind of were doing earlier, which is why I wanted to reel you back. Because I don't think it's fair to stick by the book. I think we should, at some point, stick by what the person's thinking and then get lost and figure our way back. I mean, it is nice to stick by the book, and but, you know, I don't have a book here that I can just give this really easy, so we have to just think instead. That's what you get when you get this teacher. <laughs> okay, how about something that's a conceptual consciousness but not a wrong consciousness? I'm tired. <laughs> That's conceptual. <laughs> and it's not a wrong consciousness. Well, it is wrong because I'm lying. So, <laughs> Sorry. I'm just... Please give me a wrong uh, conceptual consciousness, not a wrong consciousness. An inferential um, consciousness that is um, realizing impermanence. Okay, I accept. Could be a mere reason. Why is an inferential consciousness realizing impermanence a conceptual consciousness? Because it is a determinative norm. <laughs> that mixes a sound and a meaning generality? That, right. That's suitable right. to be mixed? That's just suitable to be mixed. Okay, but why is it not a wrong consciousness? Because the wrong consciousness is a knower that is mistaken with regard to its object of engagement. But isn't Which it wrong is, with its object? Isn't it a knower that's mistaken with its object of engagement? No. Why? Be, because it's a correct consciousness with regard to its uh, object of engagement. I accept. <laughs> well, yeah, please. Inferential cognizer rec realizing, realizing the impermanence of the pot. Right. It's not rec realizing. But I guess if it's inference, it might. It necess it, it necessitates. Imp impermanence could be the subject. Right. Yeah. The object. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I so it's because we accept that as a given, right? You couldn't have an inferential cognizer of the something permanent. No. Yeah, you could. Oh, right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you don't have to state that it's the inferential cognizer of the subtle impermanence of the chair, right? You, you can just say inferential cognizer realizing impermanence. Not of what? Okay. Yeah, I don't think you have to say of what. Yeah, she just had to somehow get me to understand that it was a not a wrong consciousness. What time do we end this class? Oh, thank you. Did we get through it? <laughs> okay, let's do that really quickly. Okay, so now they're actually, we're thinking as this, but they're actually this. Okay, what's something that you can think of from daily life?
Yeah, like, okay, apples and oranges. That's easy. Apples, I can spell those. So how would you see them as 3P? <laughs> What's it called? Orange apple. <laughs> an orange apple. Oh, because you have an orange apple. Okay, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay, but what do we, 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 I think we need some, well, you could, there could be something, there could be something that it was, that you had a, you could have a hybrid. She's making it up. She has to see it as 3P, though. So what do we do? They're thinking that there's at least one thing that is both. And she, and what is it? This apple orange. Oh, I've been to Fiji. <laughs> and I took pictures of every tree there. <laughs> None of them had that fruit. Um. <laughs> A student was um, prepared for class and a student was not prepared for class. They are mutually exclusive? Yeah. And, yeah, and we're if it's getting there. Sweet peas, on. you could accept, uh, you prepared? could have the assumption that all students are prepared for class. Not and prepared. That's how we came in here. No, mm. <laughs> But how would you get those to be like that? Like all, all prepared students are actually not prepared because we <laughs> don't have complete knowledge of the material. <laughs> how about tomatoes and vegetables? Because I think tomatoes are fruits. Yeah, that's a good one. Are they? They're both? Mm. So I, I think that every tomato is a vegetable. That's wrong, right? Tomatoes are not vegetables. <laughs> oh, that's hard. But then it's four possible. <laughs> How about knowledge and correct suspicion? <laughs> That's what said the book has. How about sharks and mammals? <laughs> sharks and mammals. Tomatoes are fruits that are considered vegetables, and I got fighting issues. Okay, I think that one works. Let's do it. I like that one. Tomatoes and vegetables. And vegetables. Okay, so. Here's veggies, and here's tomatoes. Okay, don't give him the mic. <laughs> we have tomato and veggies. That's what they think. They think that all tomatoes are veggies, and actually, they aren't, except for, for some people who write textbooks, but they don't count. <laughs> So then you have to give valid reasons for both to show why you can't you can't you have to show why a tomato isn't a vegetable. A tomato isn't a vegetable because it has seeds. No vegetables have seeds. How about squash? No squash has a seed. Squash squash are fruit too. Flowers. Flowers? Squash or fruit? <laughs> okay, now we're going on to actually mutually inclusive. <laughs> We've spent enough time on this. Wait, so how are we supposed to reply? Because the broccoli gets cold. There's nothing to do here but give it a closing explanation. Yeah, there's little to do but give it a closing explanation. Okay, so let's give an opposing, let's, let's follow it. 
There's little to do here but give an opposing explanation. We can see that there's really little to do here but give an <laughs> opposing explanation. Because we have one person who thinks that tomatoes are vegetables, and we've got the rest of the people who are willing to speak who think that they aren't and that they're all fruits. So give me a valid reason why a tomato is a vegetable. Because of being a plant, part of a plant used as food. Is not a definition of vegetable? A, a, a plant or part of a plant used as food, typically as accompaniment to meat or fish. That's not a very good definition. Because that's because there's many things that would fit that definition that aren't vegetables. Like most of the stuff we eat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Vegetable and fruit are not contradictory categories. They're coming at things from different ways. You need to give me a you hey you, you need to give me no, you need to give me a valid reason why a tomato is a vegetable. You put you posited it. Come on. Valid reason. This is debate. You gotta stick with the form. That's, that's fair. Okay. Why is a vegetable why is a tomato a yeah. Why is it yeah, tomato not a vegetable? Okay, you who don't think it's vegetables, that think it's fruits, because it's a fruit. Well that's your problem there. She's got a definition and you don't. So I go I kinda go with her. Uh, you're the one who's positing it, not me. I'm the challenger. Fruit is a single seed or many seeds inside and grow from a flower of a plant. All okay. fruits. Yeah. Okay, I have to go back to that. Wait, wait, I have to go back to that. <laughs> you're the one who, you are the defender. I'm the challenger. I gave you a definition. And the definition I can shoot holes through. Okay, here we go. No, no, you have to give me a. Okay, here. Okay, here we are. Wait, wait, wait. We're we're back on this. Give me your definition. Write it up here. <laughs> Write up your definition, and then we're gonna shoot it down. I, it's a good thing. This is a way to do it. I mean, it's fair. Is it, he has a good. De he has a definition. We should use it. We should use the form and see if we can undermine it. If we can't, then we can't. But I could think of like a lot of things that fit that definition that weren't weren't vegetables. So that's what I've got planned. No. Okay. We'll just say it. What you remember about it. A plant or part of a plant used as food. Typically accompanied with meat or fish. Okay, that's your definition. Uh, so. One of the examples they give is also a fruit. A bean. It's a seed. It's a fruit. It's a plant. It's a seed. It's a fruit. Well, a, a, the illustration is not a definition. I'm just we're, we're just working with the definition. A plant or part of a plant that is a food that can accompany fish. And whatever is is your definition of vegetable. So then, the, then it follows that a quinoa is a vegetable. That kiwi is a vegetable. It follows that kiwi is a vegetable. That's my response. Wow. Why? Because because uh, it because it fits your definition. It's I food, and you can food. eat it with fish or meat. You agree? Okay. It follows that uh, watermelon is a is a vegetable because it's a food, and you can eat it with. It has parts, plant parts, and you can eat it with fish and meat. It follows mustard. It follows. It follows that peanuts are a vegetable. Well, they might be. They're legumes. I mean, you see what I mean? It's just not a very good definition. It doesn't, you can't have, you can't, ha it, it goes against the thing of definitions to have more than 
it can, there's only one, uh, how do I say this with the proper words? A definition can only have one definiendum. And it seems like we're kind of breaking that here. I have a, a okay, wait. Okay, we're stopping on that because we don't have time. It's, it's really late. So we didn't finish that. We left something undone. <laughs> Any time. Now I don't have to do this for the next four weeks. Unless you want me to do it, it will be the same way it was tonight. No preparation. Lots of jokes. <laughs> Let's well, it is good to, I don't know, this is the way my mind works, so you just have to work with it. I can only know, I only know what I know in this topic. So I have to kind of go, as he said in here, you have to use what you know, and then by using what you know, you're going to grow. Like you can tell, the people who have practiced more than I have, much better at this. Me, terrible memorizer, not enough practice. But I do think about these things, so I have that part. I just can't get it into the form very well. But I'm trying to use the form so you can watch me grow, so I don't mind. I'm not proud on that note. Um, so I like to, I'm, if I do this class, I'll do it the same way, because to me, this is fun. And this is how I learn. I learn by actually doing it. And I have to do it by falling on my face and figuring out how to respond to, you know, that was a good, this was a good illustration to me. It was like perfect. I mean, this is the kind of thoughts we have. <laughs> so we have to find ways to work with what we have. So we made it.